Why don't they focus on that? Because we eat too much. Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So y'all, I made a video titled Why Germans Are Thin or How Do Germans Stay Thin? And to my surprise, I got a lot of comments in the comment section saying was Deutsch. Dünn. So with this video, I have decided to make a response to why Germans are so thin or how do Germans stay so thin with why are Germans so fat. I can already see the hatefulness in the comment section from this video. I can never do anything right, you guys. I make a video titled how Germans stay thin. Everyone says I don't know what I'm talking about. Germans are fat. And then I make a video talking about why Germans are fat or why Germans are getting fatter. Then I'm like scheiß Auslanderin. Americans are fatter. Um, I'm fatter. Who knows what people say. And I'm just like... Hans and Gertrude really ruin it for all of us. <laughs> Let's start off with the most obvious reasons. I'm going to blame America. I feel like that takes the edge off of this video a little bit. If I can blame the United States because everyone knows the United States is like to blame for everything wrong in the world. <laughs> No, but seriously, the Earth orbits around the United States of America and everything that we do as United States citizens. So it would only make sense that our habits, our consumerism, our greed, our capitalism has made its way across the pond. Now in this video, I'm gonna be putting a lot of emphasis on fast food companies, but this can go for any company out there. I feel like the things that I'm saying, even though I'm gonna be talking about fast food, can be related to other areas and different types of businesses as well. So in order for companies to optimize revenue or to optimize profits, meaning make more money over the years, you know, grow as a business, not necessarily staying stagnant or being at a plateau, they need to do a mixture of, I think I have four or five different points here. They need to create new products. They need to up the prices. They need to increase the frequency at which customers consume. They need to increase their transaction size or they need to find new customers. So the thing is most fast food companies that are successful have most of the points that I listed previously. But the thing that a lot of people struggle with is new customers. Because at the end of the day, the population growth cannot sustain, I guess, revenue growth for a company. And so what do companies do? They look for new markets. And like I said, Germany is very attractive. And also I wanna point out, America is at the brink <laughs> of stuffing our faces. Because I know someone will be like, well, Haley, why don't companies just focus on getting consumers in the United States to consume more then? Why don't they focus on that? Because we eat too f much in the United States. We're literally at our breaking point. We can't eat anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what else y'all want me to say. We are at the max capacity of food that we can consume in the United States. And I really don't think that there's much room for growth there. So that is why a lot of companies, they go out, they look for new markets, and they try to dominate that specific market. And so the next point, which is pretty much a continuation of the first point, you guys, is the infiltration of American fast foods. If you come to Germany, you guys, you will see, like I said, Burger King, McDonald's, uh, Pizza Hut, Domino's. I'm trying to think of what other American fast food restaurants or companies there are here. There are a bunch. I personally don't visit them that often. It's like once every couple of months. I mean, McDonald's, y'all, I could eat a nice little chicken nugget here and there. No, but really, there are even German fast Fast food companies that are popping up like hotcakes all over the place or that have already been like seasoned in, in Germany. And so yeah, the infiltration of fast food is just becoming more common. The idea of eating fast food is also becoming more common in Germany. I feel like many years ago, it didn't used to be like this. People would sit down, they would eat, they weren't in a hurry. And now it's sort of switching over to like the American way of doing things. Eating on the go, everything is a rush. And that is where fast food comes 
comes into play. And the interesting thing about fast foods, which I read this in a textbook that I have, I will try to screenshot it for you. I have the textbook saved on my computer and it was talking about how fast food restaurants, I think out of 2000 options of food that were offered, only like 10% were actually in the daily recommended calorie intake, carbohydrate intake, fat intake, sugar intake, and everything else was like above the recommended daily count. So that means you're getting foods that are higher in fats, higher in sugars, higher in carbs, just higher in all the bad stuff that you aren't supposed to eat in huge, enormous amounts. You're getting big portion sizes. You're getting foods that are deep fried usually. You're getting foods that aren't really made with quality ingredients or even with like quality techniques. And what I wanted to point out is that when you are looking at the infiltration of fast food, American fast food in Germany, you are usually looking at unhealthier alternatives when comparing it to a German meal. And that's all. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just an uneducated opinionist <laughs> on the internet. So the next point you guys is going to be the genetic disposition or the genetic factors and environmental factors. Now I feel like this is pretty obvious. I've talked about this many times before in a bunch of other videos, but I'm going to be talking about it from a fast food aspect. So hold on for this ride, you guys. When we are talking about, let's say, McDonald's, the first McDonald's was introduced in my hometown of Munich, Germany <laughs> in 1971, you guys. That is 50 years. It's crazy because I think of like 1970 being 20 or 30 years ago, but in reality, it's 50 freaking years ago, which means that is five decades, half a century, a lot of damn babies have been produced <laughs> since the beginning of McDonald's in Germany. And I'm not here to say that German people are genetically predisposed to obesity, but what I am saying is that if McDonald's has been around going on 50 plus years and people have been consuming McDonald's on a regular basis because the trajectory, is that the right word, of fast food, has steadily increased over the years, which means that more people, more generations are being introduced to high fat, high sugar, low nutritional value food, and that leads to genetic predispositions because let's say you're eating McDonald's every day, you have cardiovascular issues, or you have diabetes, or you have who knows what you can have from all these things. There are a whole bunch of issues, you guys. I could list like thousands. And you have children. Those children, according to science, are more likely to be obese or to have those same issues later on in life or even when they are born. And it's a nasty domino effect. And I feel like if more fast food restaurants are going to be popping up like daisies in a field of sh then you're going to have more people genetically predisposed. The next point is going to be money, you guys. And according to Wikipedia, which is the most reliable source on the internet, Germans are ranked, let me, let me read actually, because I don't remember what I wrote down for this point. Out of 190 countries, Germany ranked or still rank 17th for average earned income, placing them in the higher income category. And some more information that I wanna sprinkle in for this point, according to the National Center for Biotechnology Information or the National Library of Medicine, younger people and younger adults are more prone to obesity than any other group. And according to Forbes, which was a very interesting article that I read, most people's incomes peak at 45 years old. So what I concluded from this, which I just made this up in my head, you guys, uh, there might not be any correlation between these things. It's just a hypothesis. And that may be the reason that people gain more weight upwards of 45 years old is because they have extra income. They have extra money, disposable income to spend on Food. I can only imagine the people that get their first major job where they're making 2,000, 3,000 euros a month after they've been making pennies or maybe they had a mini job making 500 euros a month and then they go to this new level of income. Do you know how many cheeseburgers you could buy with 2,000, 3,000 euros a month? Especially now since it's the 50 year anniversary in Deutschland and you can buy a cheeseburger for 50 cents. A lot. <laughs> 
a lot a lot you guys but i hope this made sense for you guys the more money that you make usually not always equates to more disposable income the more disposable income that you make equates to more money being spent on stupid stuff the next point you guys which whoo, i don't know if i should make this the last one probably not i have two more i think hopefully i can get through them quickly but i'm talking a lot a company sees that there is an increasing weight or that there is an increasing waste line and they say you know what in order to get more customers or to keep these customers why don't we put out two more sizes you know capturing new audiences referring to one of the points i mentioned in the beginning of this video you guys you know full circle moment here so yeah the company adds the two sizes to their ausfall then you have more sales more people coming into the store that are bigger that can fit in those sizes and more people feel accepted and they feel comfortable in their own skin and i think that is very important i think everyone should be confident but just for the purpose of this video i'm going to say why this maybe isn't always the best thing the company slowly realizes like hey that's a big hit we can add more sizes or two more sizes to our ausfall and get more people to come in so the two previous larger sizes which were technically the largest sizes at that time are no longer the largest sizes they've implemented larger than the largest so then you have more people coming in they are like oh well i'm not that big anymore because there's people bigger than me it's a it's a mental game girls go through this i don't know if it's the same for men we are very body conscious we have to deal with people talking about gaining weight with us all the time so for us it's always nice to see that we're not the biggest we're not the smallest we're somewhere in the middle and that everyone has like a choice but an interesting story for this point is that i had a pair of jeans that i bought the first like week that i moved to germany they were relatively expensive at the time they were like 40 euros 50 euros and i love them i still have them to this day i still wear them they're amazing they have holes i've worn them up down all around this dang country and continent of europe and then i finally thought to myself Haley, come Sean, you can buy yourself another pair of these jeans so i bought the exact same pair of jeans a size bigger because i've gained weight and i know this but when i got the jeans in my possession they were technically a smaller size on the label it could have just been a misprint it could have just been an issue in the warehouse with people packing human error i have no idea but what i do know is that the jeans were technically the same size according to their labels but i ordered a size bigger and the bigger pants like the newer pants that i ordered were exponentially bigger than the older pants that i had so the size 40 that i purchased five years ago when I was thinner was technically the same size that I ordered a 42 in five years later. Do you get, do you see how this is wrong? And do you see how this causes issues when you're making the actual clothing bigger, but making the sizes smaller to make sure that people feel good about themselves so they can consume more? That is an issue. The next and last whew, and final point, you guys, <laughs> I'm not gonna go too much into detail about this. I've made so many videos about diet in Germany. If you want to watch them, I'll try to link them down below if you want to. But diet and beer. I actually got into an argument with someone in my previous video about beer. Sorry, you guys, if you're the person that I argued with. Supposedly, according to many different studies that have been done at Ludwig Maximilian Universität or any other universities in Germany, beer is one of the leading contributors to overweightness and obesity in Deutschland. And also that Germans are huge meat consumers. I looked up on Wikipedia, yet again, most reliable source on the internet, you guys. It said, let me think, let me see, let me see, that Germans ranked 26 on a list of 73 countries for the most meat consumption, which is pretty high you guys and meat by itself is not necessarily a bad thing but there are a lot of studies that talk about the connection between eating certain types of meat pork red meat and having certain issues like obesity cardiovascular disease and some of the main meats that germans eat are pork which is known to be one of the worst meats and then also red meat and the one thing i wanted to point out is that the german diet isn't necessarily seen as a healthy all-rounded diet usually when people are talking about german food they're usually speaking about bavarian food which like i said is i know that that's not the case we're talking about breads we're talking about butters we're talking about 
spreads, we're talking about beer, we're talking about nice fatty potato dishes, we're talking about certain meats that have been fried, we're talking about all these things that are generally unhealthier. So yeah, those are all the points you guys. This video is going to be extremely long. I hope that you liked it. If not, I, I don't know what to tell you if you didn't like it. I'm sorry y'all. And if you're upset after watching both of these videos, I don't know how to please you. So love you guys, have a wonderful day, and bye.